you can enroll up front one, two, or three year policies at your discounted realtor rate, three years being the max. Um, and you can do that through me, you can't do it through the agent portal, but in a lot of ways it may make sense in some cases, especially if you have buyers that you know or uh, gonna be in their property more than one year, maybe they're moving down, they're moving up, it's their forever home. Anyway, I wanted to make you aware of that, um, you know, three year max. So a little something different today, I have in my hot little hand, a Starbucks gift card. The first person that texts me and I put my phone number in the group chat, the maximum number of years you can enroll up front, I will win this $10 gift card. Uh, first text to come through, um, not responsible for data issues, but I'm in the office, I'll leave it for whoever wins, first text to come through. Thank you so much. Yay, thank you, Lisa. Very good. All right, uh, Scott, I'll, I'll just um, keep going and then we'll, we'll get to hear from you and Doug in just a minute. All right, Jay. Hi, everybody. Um, I have a, an issue that I don't think I should be having, and it's not really bad, but it's a question of mutual releases. Um, Lately, I've been getting questions. Hey, Jay, what if my buyer sends a mutual release asking for the earnest money back and the seller responds with a mutual release asking to keep the earnest money? What do I do? Um, who wants to tell me what you do? Anybody? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> okay. Um, when you're at the spot where everybody says, I want the earnest money, you have a couple of options. One, you can negotiate some more and come to an agreement. Or the thing that it re really comes down to is someone has to file a lawsuit. And there's really not much in between. Um, I, I've, again, I've had several, you know, now what do I do? that's what you have to do. You have to advise your client to seek to an attorney, see if they want to go forward with it. Um, and the last thing that you can do is while you're still battling over the earnest money, if your contract expires, you're out. You can get out. That doesn't mean that the seller will give up the earnest money but it does mean that you are out of contract and your buyer can go buy another house, your seller can sell a house. Um, but it, it just seems odd that lately I've been getting a lot of questions, what happens when they both want the earnest money? So unless there are any questions, that's all for that, but I do have something else. Any questions? Okay, Friday I'm doing my uh, Ignite class. Anyone who wants to come? feel free. Uh, I am doing it Zoom only. Um, let's see. It, I'm, trying, is, yeah. I'm trying to read the chat, but I'm, I'm so freaking blind right now. It's okay. It says, uh, Jay, can you please provide the pre-written language about squabbling over earnest money only? Okay, I will do that. Yes. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll get that out today. And uh, I think that's about it. Okay, uh, did you have something else, Jay? No, just, just the Ignite that I'm, I'm doing, my uh, how to write a purchase agreement and, and maybe get into the listing contract. Uh, I think that's this Friday, isn't it, Michelle? Yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. it sure is. It's from nine to four, so. Yes get ready to write some offers and I, I call it real play where yes. you give them a property and they write an offer and then you counter the offer and it it builds confidence because the one of the most paralyzing things is when someone says okay i want to write and you're like what do i do right and so the more practice you can get underneath your belt with um, scenarios practice scenarios the better you you will feel because it won't be your very first so uh, yes. Awesome. Great investment of your time. And, and if, if you plan to come, please send me an email at jrose at kw.com just so I know how many to 
plan for and I can get the documents out for you. If I don't know you're coming, then I can't mail you the documents ahead of time. Yeah, absolutely. Electronic mail, right on. Okay, uh, so if you are new to the office, we would love for you to unmute yourself and uh, show us your beautiful face. What's the kiss camera, like at Colts games and things like that? We wanna see your beautiful smile. So I uh, wish I had some good music. I'm gonna get some good music, uh, but we would love to uh, have you introduce yourself. So I see at least four of them, uh, new people on here. Abigail, how about, how about you? We wanna see your face. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Abigail Lease, brand new agent uh, in general, very, very green, uh, new to Keller Williams in December. Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> Happy belated birthday, by the way. And um, I am also super psyched because I just got my mentor. So Jennifer got a good speed is going to be mentoring me and I am like ready to jump in. Sounds good. Woo -woo. Love it. Thank you. All right, who's next, Michelle? Uh, Julie, are you still on here? Julie Pels. Julie. <laughs> okay, how about Justin Lowe? Sorry, I sorry. I'm here. Oh, Julie, there you I are. I couldn't unmute myself. That's okay. We've all been there. Yeah, well, I'm on my iPad, and I'm not usually on my iPad, so it's in a different spot. So, and here's my video. Yay! Yay! All right. So, yes, I am brand new as well. My mentor is Liz uh, Michael. Praise God for that. So happy about that. So, um, that's hi. awesome. That's, <laughs> yeah. You're in great hands. Very good. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. All right. Oh, Justin. I, yeah. Justin Lowe, where are you at? Yep. Hi, everybody. Um, <laughs> New to Keller Williams, came from, I'm a transfer from Carpenter uh, out of Crawfordsville. I'm going more into the commercial side. So if anybody's got some commercial clients, I'd be happy to take referrals. Uh, Going to be specializing in industrial flex buildings. So definitely an upcoming market. Um, if anybody wants to know about that kind of stuff, come and talk to me. I'd be, I'd love to talk about it. Um, other than that, so. Yeah, that's awesome. And Justin, you're a lead generating machine, which is awesome. Great to see you in the office. Um, when did you get in the business? About a year ago, a little over a well, year and four months, I think, is when I started. Okay. And how many closings have you had year to date? Uh, 17, 17 or 18. Lead Gen Work. So give it up for Justin. We're happy to have you. Get it. Love it. Keep it going. All right. Very good. Uh, who um, else? Oh, Patrick is. Patrick was here a minute ago. Let me see if he's. Patrick, are you here? Oh, he might have. He might have logged off. That's okay. He'll probably log back in. Okay. Very okay. good. And I'm not sure if I missed anybody, but if I did. Speak up right now. <laughs> yeah, or type in the chat box. Very good. Okay, awesome. Sounds good. Scott, take it away. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Am I incredibly dark or is it okay? Uh, you're incredibly highlighted with lots okay. of hair. Do you have lots of hair today? Uh, I mean, that's how I normally wear my hair. Can you see me better now or not? Yeah, it's good. It's perfect. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. That light looks like I'm an angel or something from heaven. Um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Steve or Kelly, I believe we were, were we wanting, to, were you guys wanting to start it a certain way or do you want me to dive yeah. right in? I want, okay. I'll go ahead and start with your questions. And I know my name always says I'm Aaron Medinwald. So it's me, Kelly, in case you guys don't recognize me this morning. I was wondering uh, who that was. <laughs> yeah. Um, we've got a couple questions for Scott, then we'll open it up for a Q&A, and he has two $50 gas gift cards to give away to you guys as well to encourage you all to participate. Um, so let's go. The first question we have for you, Scott, is explain three ways you can purchase insurance and their pros and cons. Yeah, so real quick, and this may be a refresher for some, but I know we have some new people. So when you're working with your buyers for homeowners insurance, there's really three avenues. They can go direct, which is online, right? 
Um, and the, 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 the pros of that is it can be quick, right? That, that's probably one of the few pros. Um, one of the uh, many negatives is you're, you're picking your own coverage, right? So it's kind of like, you don't know what you don't know. The, the misconception is, oh, by going online, I'm cutting out the middleman, I'm saving money. No, that, that is not the case. So buying online is one option. And I would tell you this, um, in the 14 years I've been in the business, we are seeing it more and more where, and Doug can speak to this as well, where we're spending just a little more time because we have to go over the online quote they got that is garbage and we go over our quote. So we're still converting and over 75% of the people we quote it's just we're spending a little more time because whether you know it or not, your clients are going online to get quotes. Make sure you're giving them an intro, hopefully to us or someone else, because they really don't want to go online if they don't have to. So that's one route. The other one is a captive agent. Uh, this means it's, it's an agent that has one company, right? Think State Farm, think American Family, Allstate. Uh, Farm Bureau, you call them, uh, you have an agent, so they're going to hopefully give you some good coverages. Um, but but the knock there is they're only giving you their company. So you're just hoping that their company is extremely competitive. Also in that field, specifically State Farm, and I hate to call them out, there are some limitations they have on certain coverages with basement coverages, with some deductible options, and then they do some funky things with the the roofs on renewals so um and again not that their agent their agents are fine people but they don't know what they don't know they just think that's industry standard um the last one is an independent agent which is which is what we are um independent agents in order to be an independent agent you have to represent two or more companies um in our particular case we represent eight and we feel really good about the eight we represent um that way they can save your buyer the time right of getting multiple quotes um, they can give them the best coverage, especially if it's a high-end home or if they've had multiple claims, we can find a unique situation. Um, and then also with us, every renewal, we almost treat you like a brand new client. We rerun you through our companies and see if we still have you in the best spot. So those are essentially the three best options. I'm obviously biased uh, towards the independent channel uh, because that's what I do. But I can also tell you this, there are no independent agents that are switching to go become a captive agent. In fact, in the last 10 years, it's the opposite. There's a lot of captive agents that represent American Family, State Farm, Allstate, Farm Bureau that are switching to become independent agents. Uh, it's just, it just makes so much more sense for the client. So hopefully that answers uh, the first question there, Kelly. Yes, I'm talking without my um, mute, with my mute button on. Okay, next question is, um, what if we have a buyer who already, they say, oh, well, I'm just going to get a quote from, you know, the insurance person that I already have. So what can we say to hopefully get them to maybe get another quote, shop around, or what do you guys offer that maybe the current company that they're with might not? And the pros yeah, ter yeah, terrific question. And I would say this, look, your guys' main job is to sell real estate, right? You're trying to add value by making some other referrals, but you know your client better than anyone. If they're adamant and they say, hey, I love who I'm with, maybe you don't want to ruffle the feathers. But again, if you hear them say, hey, I have my auto online, I'm just going to get a quote there, that should be a trigger point for, hey, that's fine, do that. But if you don't mind, please call, you know, give more information, Scott or Doug, they have eight other companies. Worst case scenario you find out you're already in a tremendous spot, right? So, so if they say like a state farm or online, that should really trigger you. Now, if they say, hey, I'm with another independent agent, I went to high school with them, I love them to death, yeah, you know, we, we don't need to help them there. They're, pro they're probably in a great spot. What we find out, um, and I think Jordan Moody does a great job of this, Cam does a good job on this, is they're just referring, they're just plugging everyone in on our referral link and we call them and we get that information where it's like, hey, you know, Jordan referred us to you, just wanted to touch base, see how things were going, see how we could help. And sometimes they say, hey, you know, we really love where we're at, we're not interested, but almost always they're, they're open to a quote, they're indifferent, or they're glad we called because they're upset with their current provider. So don't just assume because they have auto insurance somewhere else that they love who they're with. I, I'd say the odds are the opposite. They're very, 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 very indifferent. 
And the other thing is, I know it's a risk referring. We all know that. We are never going to embarrass you. Uh, we'll, we'll never embarrass you. We're always going to give honest advice. On the off chance we aren't competitive, we'll tell them. Um, so like I said, that's the other thing is your client's never going to leave um, a conversation or the quote process with us feeling discouraged. If nothing else, they, are, they get reconfirmation that they were already in the best spot. Scott, can you tell us a little bit about your referral link or where we can find that or how we can use that? Yeah, so I can email that out to everybody, but but Jason Casey, a big shout out to him. He helped me put it on. I think you guys have an internal dashboard. Am I correct on that? Yeah, and um, I was kind enough to put it in the, in the chat box too, but yes, I will share the link for the dashboard now as well. Yeah, so it's up on the right. It, it used to be just our logo, but now there's a link as well. And you can type in your name, obviously, your client's name, their email, their phone number. And then you can actually select the charity uh, for where you want the $25 donation to go to for our, uh, for our referral program. And you can always type in others. So if you want to go to the Keller Williams Cares, we'll obviously make that happen as well. Um, and I do, I'm actually getting ready. I don't know if you guys remember this from last year, but I send an email out about every other month. So six times a year, I don't want to inundate you with emails, but um, that link is always on the email I send out. Um, and just a quick heads up, um, I'm probably going to start uh, a texting service as well. So what we'll do, because I realize email now, a lot of people don't even check that anymore. So if everyone's okay with it, and if you're not, let me know, just respond, opt out, whatever. But every other month, so six times a year, uh, we'll send a text out with just a small little tip, you know, tidbit of information uh, to kind of make sure you at least feel comfortable and know how to refer us best. Is that, um, is that all we're ready for questions? Um, I think the last one is um, commonly overlooked things for the average homeowner when looking for yes. an insurance policy. And then we have the Q&A started in the comments here. So if you guys want to go ahead and um, type your questions as you think them, we'll go over those once Scott answers this question. Sweet. Yeah, we're doing two uh, $50 gas cards today. So throw your name in. Um, it will answer as many questions as we can. But the often overlooked, I mean, look, everyone wants to save money. We get that. We're, we're going to give you the best price humanly possible, but you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. So some common um, overlooked is insuring your house for what you paid for it rather than the rebuilding cost. Remember, the insurance company doesn't care what you paid for it. They want to rebuild that. Um, almost always the rebuilding cost is higher than the actual market value. Um, so that's sometimes if you go online or with another captive agent that's not super savvy, you know, they'll let the, the client bully them a little bit and they'll just put it for what they purchased it for. And that's where you see those people on TV that they're out, they're out significant, you know, $100,000 because they can't rebuild based on that. So rebuilding cost is number one. Liability is number two. Um, you can go anywhere from 100000 to half a million on liability on your homeowner policy. And the difference between 100000 and 500000 is about $10 on the year. So we don't even really give our clients the option because, again, if we gave you 100000 you get sued, you have a party, and someone gets in a wreck, or a kid comes over and gets hurt on your property, and you get sued for 300000 you know, you're going to cough up 200 grand only to find out if we get you better advice for $10 a year, you could have saved $200,000. So the liability is another big one. Deductible. You do have options when it comes to deductible. We typically start at a thousand. And then if it's a nicer home or the clients, you know, got more money, we can go up to 2,500. And then even 5,000 is becoming um, a little more common for the higher end homes. With online and with State Farm, they sometimes don't give you that option. They may start out at 2,500 and say, hey, we won't go any lower. Or, hey, we're going to start out at five grand and we won't go any lower. We're able to give those options and weigh the pros and the cons based on what those actual savings are. So that's the third one. Uh, water backup is number four. In a standard homeowner policy, water backup in the basement. Think floor drain. Think sump pump failure. 
um, water backup is not covered on a standard policy. So if you're going online, your clients, they're never self-selecting this because why would they? It costs money. One of the reasons they're going online is to try to save money. It's the second most common claim in Indiana behind hail. So that'd be another thing is if you have a client that has a basement, even more reason to make a referral or recommendation because if you don't, they're um, almost guaranteeing they're not going to have that coverage if they go online. And not only having that coverage, but having the right amount. You can start as low as 5000 and you can go up to unlimited for the really, really nice homes. A lot of the captive companies don't offer unlimited. So that's where we kind of, you know, if the house is half million or higher. That's where we're almost unbeatable when it comes to that coverage. Um, and then the other one is uh, sewer line um, coverage, which is fairly new in the last year, maybe two, where the buried sewer line from where it comes from your house to the, the city water, that used to never be covered. That used to be considered more of a maintenance issue. It is now um, an option. We put it on every home policy and it normally costs like 10 or 15 bucks a year. And again, if you guys have experienced that or any older homes, digging up the yard, doing that, that's 10, 20 grand right out the gate. So that's another uh, big thing that kind of is, is overlooked. So hopefully that helps answer that question. Okay, let's start with our Q&A. Janice asks, if the seller moves before listing the old house, does the existing coverage cover if the house is vacant? Great question. And this is a doozy one. Um, Yes and no. If it's vandalized, where someone breaks in and strips, you know, water heater, et cetera, um, if it's been vacant for more than 60 days, uh, vandalism coverage is no longer included. Um, if it's a fire, or if it's a hailstorm, uh, they're, they're going to cover it, but the vandalism is one that they won't. So you really want to be super careful in this particular market. I'm not a realtor, but houses are going quick, right? So it's rare that the house is going to sit vacant that long, but I would always, a good thing is just say, hey, you may want to check with your agent on this one. Because every situation, there are some unique cases, but yes, generally speaking, if the house is vacant for more than 60 days, they absolutely have the right to deny that vandalism. Um, and again, some people are aware of it and they're willing to roll the dice, especially if it's in a nice neighborhood and there's an alarm, they're not too worried about it. Uh, but again, now I, if you know the house is going to be vacant, for more than probably a month, that is something that I would just say, hey, call your current agent, just double check that you're okay. But that is a terrific question and hopefully that helps answer Janice. And if it doesn't, uh, feel free to type in something else and I can, I can elaborate more if need be. So um, to piggyback on Janice's question from Steve, this is, this is a great combo because I didn't know that uh, vacant home insurance was different. Um, so good questions, guys. Um, when do the sellers need to get vacant, vacant home coverage after they move out? How much is the premium in general? Do any carriers specialize in vacant home insurance? And what should we be discussing with our clients who are moving out of their house before putting it on the market insurance wise? Yeah, so I kind of answered a lot of those already. But, but I would say this, that most companies don't want to touch a vacant home with a 10 foot pole. So if you go online um, and they... That's the thing is most people don't disclose this. If you go online and disclose it's vacant, you're almost not even gonna be able to get a quote. Same thing with a lot of those captive companies. So we have eight standard companies that we represent, you know, AAA, Nationwide, Progressive, Safeco, Travelers, Nationwide, Grange, Auto Owners. Uh, but we have some other companies, uh, Scottsdale in particular, uh, American Modern, they, that's pretty much all they do is vacant homes and they do it really, really well. Now, the vacant home, the price is typically more expensive. So that's the, that's the other reason. Either A, people don't know to insure it as vacant, or, and this doesn't happen a lot, but sometimes they do know, and they're just not willing to pay the extra cost. And my always explanation on the vacant homes is this. Look, it's not going to be vacant very long. Just, you know, it's, if you paid it for the whole year, it's expensive. But if you only have to pay it for a month or two or even three, and it's going to be worth it. And what we see this a lot on is really flips, right? Hey, I buy the house, it's vacant. We're going to be doing some construction and some renovations. That's really the most common that we see as far as vacant now. It's probably going to be less, or more and more rare that's truly vacant during a sales situation for more than that 60 days, right? Maybe vacant a week or two. 
but that's not really the concern. It's really once it starts to get over 30 days where companies uh, will do that. Um, but like I said, really either defer to us because we would love to help or if they're just adamant, they love where they're at, just make sure they call their agent. Uh, again, anything under 30 days, I don't think you have to worry about anything over 30 days. I would definitely step in and let them know what's going on. Right. Doug says, why do I want full replacement coverage on a roof in lieu of actual cash value? Yeah, terrific question. So, um, and not to confuse people, but full replacement cost essentially means they're going to do everything minus the deductible. Where actual cash value, which we don't do, um, they will only give you, they're saying, oh, the roof was 10 years old. You know, you're going to kind of have to get a new one anyways soon. So they significantly reduce what your payout will be based on the age of the roof, and then they take the deductible off. Um, so rest assured, that's nothing that we do with our policies, unless it's like a, a, an investment property and they just are adamant. We'll, we'll do it on those, but if it's owner occupied, we never do ACV on the roof, actual cash value. If you go online, like I said, there's a lot of companies online that that's just, it just appears standard, right? So they're like, oh yeah, you know, actually that makes sense. They don't realize there's a problem until three or four years down the road when they have the claim. Um, same thing with State Farm. State Farm will sneak this in on some of the renewals and boy, is it, it, it really ticks people off because they're not really notified of it. So always, always, always 100% replacement cost because that's what you're buying insurance for. If your deductible is a thousand, that's what you pay. You get a brand new roof. If you have ACV, which is actual cash value, you may end up paying three to four grand on the depreciation plus the deductible. And now you're coming out four to five grand and, and that was unexpected. So it can be not very pleasant to put it that way. And the other thing too is just straight up across the board. There's a lot of times we're, we're literally way better on coverage than, than the other companies and our pricing is better. So it's not necessarily like, oh, you got to pick and choose between a great price or great coverage. Our pricing is great too. I mean, that's what's kind of bizarre about the whole thing is that a lot of times we're going to get better coverage and the pricing is better. There's a few times where maybe our coverage is significantly better and, and maybe we're 100 higher on the year and, and the clients see the value and they still go with us. But, but more times than not, we're giving better coverage and better pricing. So hopefully that helps on the roof coverage there, Doug. Okay, Ray Jean says, what about coverage of water lines coming into the home and regarding sewer lines, are there any requirements for the coverage? Yeah, so sewer line, water line, same thing. So sorry for the confusion. And like I said, I would tell you this just on my experience, because this is relatively new with a lot of our companies. Your buyer um, almost for sure isn't aware that this is an option. And if they don't call us specifically, there's probably a 90% chance they're not even gonna get offered this coverage unless they ask. Um, so just straight up there. But no, there, there's no requirements. It typically, of our eight companies, we have a few companies that give uh, 10,000. Um, we have a few that will go up to 15. And then we have a few that go up to 20. And, and, and like I said, so to be honest with you, normally, if, if it's close, we're going to go with the company that's giving 20 because it's just better. But sometimes people say, hey, 10 is plenty. You know, it's better than zero. So we have that conversation with our clients as well. But typically, the minimum we'll put on is 10 and the maximum we'll put on is 20. So I hope, I hope that answers that question. If the buyers are doing a lease back to the sellers instead of post possession for free, how do we handle the insurance on it? Yeah, great question. It really depends how long it is. I, again, this is where I would almost just say, hey, call your agent. <laughs> you know I mean, we, that's a case by case basis. But typically, let's say they, they close on the house. So the new homeowner has to have home insurance, right? If they're closing on the house, they have to have insurance. Um, but, you know, if you're the prior homeowner and you're worried that maybe their insurance coverage is inadequate, you could technically double cover it. You know, I don't really recommend it. Um, it really just depends on how long. If it's a day or two, it's probably not the end of the world. If it's going to be a month or longer, I'd really like to look at that situation on a, on a case by case basis. Because the other thing you could do if you're the seller 
is you can just say, hey, let me see a copy of your insurance. And if their insurance is dialed in, you're good to go. What you don't want to have happen is you assume that buyer has good insurance. Something happens, right? And then it gets all out of whack based on how you wrote the contract, et cetera. So that's really not one, a standard answer I would give them. If you're having a lease back situation or what, something like that effect, um, just call us or call the agent and we can get the, our company underwriters involved because every one of those situations is a little unique. If it's just a couple of days, it's probably not a big deal. But if it's more than a week, it's definitely something you want to make sure your agent's aware of. Okay. That helps. From Tammy, what discounts or bundles do you offer that we can promote when setting you up with our clients? Yeah, great question. So, I mean, I'd, I'd love to give some, you know, cool little spiel per se, but the reality is the best way to set us up is, hey, we represent eight different companies. So by making one phone call, you're going to get the best of those eight companies, right? You could, you could even rattle off the eight if you wanted um and, and it's not rocket science right it's we have eight options you know i like our chances against anyone because we have eight options right and we and we typically convert 75 percent of the people we quote um we're, rent, we're we're top five in the state with four of our companies um you know so those are just things that you can say as well but like i said it's we're never gonna get blown out of the water on a pricing standpoint and again, almost always, and Doug could probably allude to this too, is sometimes we're given massive savings. I mean, our average is anywhere from 200 to $500 a year, but I mean, shoot, there's times where Doug or Justin, they'll save someone, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars on the year. I mean, that's a lot of money, let alone uh, the coverages that we're providing. Because at the end of the day, that's really why your clients are buying the policy is when something goes wrong, they want to be covered. So hopefully that helps. Okay, I think, oh, we have one from, oh, Cam was just a comment. Okay, so the last question that I saw was what sort of policy would one need for an Airbnb or a VRBO? Great question, awesome question. I don't know who asked that, but that is awesome. Same thing. A lot of these people probably aren't disclosing it to their agent. And if something happens, they may not be covered. Right. So we have um, it, it's, it's kind of standard rental policy. And there, there's an endorsement that gets put on it where it's, it's short term rentals. Right. It's not the same renter for a year or six months. It's, you know, you're having five, 10, 15 different people in there in the course of a month. So um, it is a policy. Same thing. You just want to disclose to your agent or to your insurance company. Hey, this is a VRBO or, hey, this is an Airbnb, am I covered? Um, and either A, make sure they put the coverage on or if they say, oh, yeah, yeah, you're already covered, make sure they email you something in writing because you don't want to have something crazy happen and you find out you're not covered. I mean, that, that's really what a lot of the problems happen in insurance is people make bad decisions when they buy the policy. And then they don't find out about it until a claim happens. And then they're frustrated with the claim process, right? That's probably 75% of the bad claims are they just didn't have the right coverage to begin with. So the Airbnb and the VRBO is terrific. And again, uh, not all companies offer that either. So that's another one where we'd be more than happy to assist on. Okay. Doug says, why would I want to see a copy of the clue report when I'm the buyer's agent? Yeah, great question. So if you're the buyer agent, um, I would say the only time you want to see a copy of the clue report is if you just think that the seller's lying on the disclosure form, right? Like, yeah, you know, I don't know, this basement looks like there's been water damage, but yet they, they checked no issues, you know what I mean? So I don't think it's necessary for every particular case, but I would say if you have a hunch that there was a claim and they're not disclosing it, um, it's worth noting it, right? Because um, um, I'd say water back in the basement or roof. And more times than not, you can tell, right? If it's brand new, they probably, probably had a claim. Hopefully they're telling you, but if they're not. Um, so a clue report that we run, um, it's a claim report essentially. So when the buyer's buying the house, it, it does two things. It runs the prior claims on the buyer, uh, but it also runs the prior claims on the house. Prior claims on the house does not affect the buyer at all. 
Um, but you still, you know, oh man, there were four water backup claims, <laughs> you know, okay, is that, has that been fixed or is it, you know, is, is this going to be an ongoing problem, right? The buyer takes their claims with them wherever. So if they were a renter or a prior homeowner and they had a house fire or, a, you know, a hailstorm, that claim is going to count against them for that three to five year period, regardless of where they live. I know that's that's a common misperception I've seen among real realtors over the years as they think it's on the house, not on the buyer. It's actually on the buyer. And if there are no more questions, I have a few things that I'd like to add. So you just tell me, Kelly, if there's anything else coming through there. Um, Steve said, do you run a clue report for every homeowner policy that you issue? Yeah, we have to. <laughs> because, because again, otherwise we don't, then we're more or less misrepresenting what the buyer has, right? So it's like we we have to run that clue report to see what the buyer has. Because if the buyer has a $10,000 claim, that's going to be in the rate for the new house. Um, so do we disclose that to the buyer every time? Like, hey, by the way, this home has X, Y, Z? No, because we, we don't want to kill the deal either. So I think we've mentioned this with, with the Keller Williams offices. If you're a particular agent, and you want that clue report disclosed to you so you could maybe go back to the buyer, we will have no problem doing that. Just let us know. Um, like I said, it's typically something we try to stay out of because we realize if someone did have a basement claim two years ago, uh, we're assuming your buyer's smart enough that they're buying it and it's already been repaired. Now, has the underlying issue been fixed and it could happen again? Yeah, we don't know that, but we're assuming the house is in good standing. So. Uh, hopefully that answers your question there, Steve. Ray Jane says, and Ray Jane, you might get on here and explain this in a little bit more detail, but she said, had a seller that had a roof and basement claim, but did not repair and the new insurer would not cover it. I don't know if you need more details, Scott. Nope, or nope that, that's, I, I, that's fine. Um, so a couple things, and this is where the inspection process is important. Um, now, how do you know? That you, so, so again, if they had hail damage, how do you know they had a claim? Well, you may not, but hopefully the inspect. I mean, if the insur prior insurance company paid out for hail damage, hopefully the inspector would notice that it was an old roof and, and had hail damage, right? Same thing with the water claim. So I don't know how they kind of got around those, but, but the big issue is this. Let's say you guys, Kelly's buyer comes to me um, February 1st and we buy a policy, right? And then February 10th, she calls and says, hey, my roof has significant hail damage. It may have significant hail damage, but the reality is if nothing happened from February 1st, when she started her policy to February 10th, the insurance company's not gonna pay that out. They're gonna say, hey, that was pre-existing damage. When you say nothing happened, you mean like there wasn't a hail storm? Yeah, there was not a hail storm, yeah. So if it, so, but, but, uh, but another thing is, is, and this happens all the time too, is let's say you're a client for a couple of years and, you know, you're not going up on the roof and, and they say, hey, you know, you have hail damage. There, you can't really prove when it happened and your policy has been continuous for a couple of years. As long as there's been hail damage in that area in the last year or two, they're going to pay that claim out. It really just comes down to the fact that you're starting a new policy, right? So then the other thing is, and I'll share this with you guys too, Kelly comes in, you know, and says, hey, this, it's February 10th, I have hail damage. They say, well, you know, you don't, well, you do, but, you know, we don't have, we don't have a hail storm. If a big hail storm comes in in May um, and Kelly turns in a claim then, it's pretty likely that they're going to pay that claim out because they're not going to be able to prove when the hail, you know what I mean, whether there was pre-existing or not. So that's where it gets some gray area and that's where it gets a little, yeah, a little dicey is, um, you know, if there was maybe mild hail damage on it and now a big hail storm comes. Because almost, you guys probably were, almost nobody replaces the roof now unless there's hail damage. I mean, the insur one of the reasons why homeowners insurance prices have kind of gotten out of whack over the last 10 or 15 years is because they're pretty much paying for every brand new roof that goes on any house ever. Um, so hopefully that helps answer that question. But yeah, that's why you really want to be, excuse me, super on it when it comes to the inspection. The inspector should be able to, you know, the two things you want to look at, in my opinion, from an insurance standpoint, are the roof 
in the basement, right? The inspector should be able to tell if the old roof or even potential hail damage, right? I mean, even if they're not certain, hey, do you think there's even potential hail damage? And then same thing in the basement. Hey, does it ever look like there's water, been water manager ever? Um, those are good questions to really ask the inspector. Steve says, how do you handle aluminum wiring and knob and tube wiring for insurance? Yeah, great question. That's a loaded, loaded question there, Steve. I, I, I'd expect nothing else. Um, most companies won't do it if it's disclosed. That's kind of the issue. I mean, if it's not disclosed, it becomes a big, big gray area and your clients roll the dice if a claim ever happens. Now, there are so many homes that have knob and tube now, right? So they're like, oh, I have it now. You know, what's the issue? They're grandfathered in. When those houses are then switching hands, that's when the insurance companies are trying to get rid of that. So it's very, very, very possible you have sellers that have it. And they're like, oh, it's never been an issue in the past. You're absolutely correct. They're grandfathered in. It's a non-issue. It's when the property switches hands that that becomes the real, real issue. So we have a couple companies that will do it. Um, as long as it, you agree, uh, one, an, an electrician has to sign off on it, which most of the times they won't, or two, agreeing to repair that within a couple months after closing. But otherwise, no, it's kind of a, they don't want to mess with that. And I'd also tell you this too, from a, you're representing the buyer, you want to add value to them. Could they not disclose it and, and maybe get away with it? Sure. But even if claim never happens, then when they go to sell 10 or 15 years from now and they still have knob and tube, this issue is not going away. In fact, it's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's going to affect them when they go to resell. So if you have a client that's maybe not listening to you or saying, ah, you know, we, we won't disclose it. You may just want to share with them that this could, you know, yeah, you don't disclose it, but this could really kill your, um, your um, resale opportunity down the road. Um, Cam, I think that he answered your question about hail damage on the roof. And then Regine says, do your companies cover hail damage on windows? Yeah, yep. Hail, uh, all companies, unless, um, yeah, I mean, all companies should cover hail damage on windows. Hail damage to siding, uh, to the gutters, to the downspouts, hail damage is covered. And then obviously even on the car, you know, if you have an auto policy with full coverage, you know, you're going to have cut hail damage on the car. Another quick little thing, since I'm on that subject, car parked in the garage, people always get a little confused. The house burns to the ground. The car is not covered on the home policy. The car is always covered on the auto policy. So if you have a car and it's parked in the garage and you never drive it, oh, it's going to be covered by the home. That is not the case. The auto is always separate, even if it's parked in the garage. So hopefully that answers that question as well. Another good question, Cam. Floodplain, are we able to give you a call to get a quick rough estimate on what the cost may be for our buyers? 100%, Cam. And in fact, not even an estimate. We'll just give you an accurate quote. The beautiful thing with a flood, uh, uh, I should say beautiful, but um, with homeowners insurance, there's a lot of personal variables that come into the house. So if Kelly and I are buying the same house, credit matters, age matters, and our prior claims matter. So Kelly and I could be buying the same house. She has great credit and I have terrible credit. It could be a $500 difference a year on the homeowner's insurance. With flood, no personal factors matter. So that then means it doesn't matter who the buyer is, we can do a generic quote. So if you're the list agent and you think it's in a floodplain, we can provide an accurate quote that you can advertise. And if you're working with the buyer, same thing. All we can tell you is if you're working with the buyer, look, if we're going to provide them a quote, we'd love the opportunity to provide them a quote on everything, right? So just ask the buyer, hey, you plan on using the, you know, otherwise just call, have them call their agent, right? Because their agent can work up a flood quote too. Now, if it's your listing, I get it. You can't control where the buyer goes. We're just doing it to add value. But if you are working with the buyer, I'd say either, hey, call your current agent, have them work a flood quote. Or I got a guy, call Scott or Doug, they'll, they'll do it for you. Because, yeah, flood's really taboo, right? It's kind of like, ah, oh, flood, stay away. Well, what if you find out it's only 700 on the year, which is low? Most of them are going to be much more expensive than that. But at least you get the unknown out of the way, right? Most people are like, oh, 
it's going to be 3000 you know what if it's only 1600 so yes can we can definitely buyer or list we can give you an accurate flood quote give us a little time if you don't mind because we have a couple options there and one of them is a little delayed because we have to run it through a manual process. So give us a day to two days to run those numbers. Um, if you guys ever need that in the future, we have absolutely no problem providing that extra value for you guys. Who's your preferred restoration company and when do you refer them out? Yeah, great question. So service master um, and typically in emergency situations. And the main reason we recommend service master is we have a relationship with the owner um, so as you guys know, when, if things go sideways, we got someone that's super accountable, um, cause restoration situations are tricky, right? It's night weekends. It's, it can be a process. So we recommend service master, uh, but always first and foremost, if someone, you know, there's a lot of restoration companies, if someone's got a contact or relationship somewhere else, Hey, go there first. We're normally rec making our recommendations if they really need somebody, right? Uh, but yeah, great, great question there, Doug. Um, and he's asked if you can share their contact info. Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, I can share uh, their general contact info if you want, Doug. And then, you know, I can also give you the owner's info too. But I'd also say this, if you ever have a client, whether they're a client of ours or not a client of ours that has an issued service master, never hesitate to reach out to us because I can get me in contact with the owner um, on, on a few occurrences that things have gone a little sideways he's always made it right and that's really you know at the end of the day let's be honest that's the most important thing is if there are mis missteps or hiccups um they, they fix it great okay um i think generally in the business meeting they like the last 10 mary likes to wrap things up the last 10 minutes so we'll give it back to you mary thanks scott thank you hey mary can i before you wrap it up can i i had a couple quotes i wanted to share inspirational sure, quotes about them. Okay, sorry. Um, so life is a dance between what you fear most and what you desire most. That's a quote I just heard the other day. Um, people do not wander around and find themselves at the top of Mount Everest. I love that quote. And then the other one is just always adding more value. I mean, it, those are just three quotes that kind of spoke to me. I'm going over those with my team, but I wanted to share those because I know you guys are big on inspiration and positive energy. So I wanted to share those with you guys as well. We are, we are. Thank you. Way to go, Scott and Kelly. Appreciate y'all. You did a fantastic job. So love that. Um, Michelle, she's going to bring our, our slides over so everybody can see. Uh, next up, it looks like leverage with uh, tech in your business Fridays. Uh, check the calendar. I put two links in. One is a, let me just um, get super savvy here. Oh, wait, wait. Um, Michelle, can I share my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. All right. Okay. So here's two things I want you to put in your favorites. This is that link, Advanced Agent Education. It looks really good on your phone, but it, it's like the weeks, um, sessions, and the Zoom links. And then there's like recorded investor group sessions. Uh, we post those um, sessions there, the recordings. And then mega agent interviews. If you miss the mega agent interview series last year, we're posting them there. And so um, also other KW command and KW technology things. So, but if you can see, it's really, really super simple. And I have a lot of people sending this out to guests as well outside of the office. And then um, the other one I put in the link is agent dashboard. So this is um, Jason, props to Jason Casey for creating this dashboard. Basically you can get to any of the links, you can get to the 30, 60, 90, but you can get to Scott right up here or Keegan or Lisa, uh, other videos. So it's it's an all-encompassing dashboard, um, like the 30, 60, 90 to see how you're doing on that. Um, Patrick, Megan, Leslie, Benjamin. So look, Leslie and Benjamin are rocking it out. All those check marks are things that they've accomplished. So uh, that's our way too to stay accountable and uh, that we know that you're doing good and. Michelle, I will stop my screen sharing.
bam. And then you can share it back. Thanks. All right, we talked about Tori sessions, Tech Time with Tori and Janice. Um, so Janice is more of like the command DocuSign commissions tab, the logistics of it, how to submit it, how to get paid, how to all of that templates, verbiage. All right, and Ray Jean, Ray Jean, uh, shoot, how, how many years have you been in the business? I love it. I just asked you this the other day. So she's going to go over find and show homes with the showing instructions. Another great, great, great um, tool to have in resource to have in the database. And I think she's also a mentor as well. And then Mr. J. Rose, bringing it in nine to four, make sure you email him so he can send you the packet of information on contracts. A 32 years of real estate law experience. So uh, I love that. Initiate contracts like a pro. Fabulous. And Mike Lyons, we're doing something. Um, Michelle, it used to be, is it is it um, the next business meeting? Yeah, it is. So we're going to interview them. I don't know uh, who's interviewing, but I know our, our education um, team has it already documented and planned for the year. So that's awesome. You're going to learn from mega agent Mike Lyons. It's a great one to invite other guests to. A book club. I think we're getting through page 96 this week and we're doing our worksheet. So I don't know about your all's week, but I feel like I have a worksheet for every day this week. So those in the book club, you know what I'm throwing down and we're going to Clear it. <laughs> We're going to clear it all. Any thought of discomfort or stress is an alarm that lets you know that you're believing in an untrue thought. So we're going to um, work through some stuff on Friday. I'm excited. Profit Cheer Mastery, uh, that's got to be wrapping up because her call's coming soon. So four, four to and a half hours of content. I know Wendy's gotten through almost all of the content. And then you get live calls with Linda McKissick and uh, one a month for that value. I'm going to be on the calls as well. If you want to share space and, um, you know, just be in community too and interact with Linda. We're starting in like a few minutes. So this would be for like um, someone who's looking to pattern the showing assistant in the inside sales associate model. And I do know that Jen and uh, Grady are going to, Adam, are going to have their entire team members on the Zoom, and then they're going to ask them questions, and it's going to be very, very interactive. Jen has the first half, and then uh, Adam has the second half. Ben Kenny, uh, kudos to Michelle for getting this already in there. This just came out. So uh, time block, February the 3rd, 2 to 3.30. If you all don't know who Ben Kenny is, that's okay. Uh, just make sure you're on the Zoom. <laughs> uh, he, there's been only two times in the last, I don't know how many years, that he has um, interacted from a speaker standpoint for the Ohio Valley. And the last time, I think they only had 100 agents, the top agents in the three states on the call. So this is a great uh, item of value. And uh, he'll, he'll make your thinking um, enlarge for sure. <laughs> so that's, that's great. Can't wait to hear what your takeaways are there. He's like a serial entrepreneur on like just huge. Um, and then save the date recognition awards. It's coming up uh, February 24th. And uh, we're excited about that. So save the date for that. Just know it's coming. And then family reunion. Oh my goodness, I forgot about this. Okay, so we have, Michelle, we have the space downstairs, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do, what is family reunion? Uh, it is a series of Gary interviewing top agents. Uh, and um, they're doing the same thing like they did at Mega Camp. So they're going to have three hours of content and then they're going to uh, edit it, edit it, edit it. So for every three hours that they video, they bring it down to an hour. So it's super content heavy. Um, we are going to have some physical spots downstairs in the conference room. I think we have um, room for a certain amount. For those of you all who've already said, I want to have a physical experience. And then we also have virtual uh, tickets available too. So Michelle is navigating that. Look for information 
And what else, Michelle, anything else on that piece? Oh, no, I'm <laughs> sorry. Okay. Uh, oh, we, Wendy, yay, Wendy. She wins the $50 gift card for building her profit share and she is on it. Uh, she is absolutely on it. She sent me notes on every person that she's got right now. So that's awesome. And then is a health challenge round two starts February the 1st. Uh, it's baseline three sessions, 30 minutes a week of exercise. And then the up it is five days drinking your body, half of your body weight in ounces per day for five days. So we're doing something called habit stacking. So look for information um, from Kristen or go ahead and say, hey, this is what I'm committed to. Fill out your sheet send her, her your Venmo money and um, get get going for that. So even if you didn't participate in the first round, we got you, you can come in on round two or you can change your frequency for round two as well from an exercise standpoint. Cam, oh, is she, what is she eating, ice cream? <laughs> yes, the Dairy Queen wanted ice cream last night so we took her out to Handles. Whoa, <laughs> oh, up school ice cream too, boozy ice cream. <laughs> It, only the best for Ruthie. Absolutely, <laughs> yes. So uh, it's been super fun getting to hang out with Ruthie this week. Um, the person that uh, is going to Ruthie next has been such a huge help to Tyson and I, especially just becoming a spouse team and whatnot. Um, they've helped us several times when we run into issues. They've met with us one-on-one -on -one, um, and they're just a, an amazing mentor and truly embody KW culture. So we are going to be handing Ruthie off to Allie Moody. Yay, Allie! Yay. <laughs> I love it. The, this is fun. This showed up somehow. I don't know. Can you all see this? This picture, Michelle? No. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. It is of like Luke, who was like less than two, jumping in <laughs> the fountain. Noah trying to handle Luke and hold Ruthie, and then Angelina getting up there too. So uh, that's a lot of fun. So take pictures of Ruthie. Time flies. We only have today once. So make it count. Congratulations to Allie. Well, well deserved. Somehow we're going to have to do a virtual picture of Allie and like put Ruthie in the picture and uh, tell the story. You guys have a great day. Make today count. You guys are awesome. See you soon. Yay, Cam. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, Justin. Kelly, way to go. Good job, Kelly. Appreciate you. Megan, Jason, lots of good people. Love it. Love it, love it, love it.